So what's going on guys, it's Captain America. Hope you guys are well and thank you so much for coming on to this video. So as always, starting off with a match stat. So for this game, we did win 7-2. It was a very strong performance on our side. Yes, we only had 43% possession, but we had 25 shots in total versus five from the opposition. Again, a very strong performance from the boys as uh, they did score the first goal, which was absolutely ridiculous, especially being outside of the box and the way that it curled in. Don't get me wrong. It was a very beautiful goal, but the goalkeeper, Sorry. because it's an AI, should have done much better. So, no, we capitalized on that and we progressed and we did win, as mentioned, 7-2. And from my side of things, I was playing as a central attacking midfielder. I had a 10 out of 10 match rating. I scored one goal. I did have three assists as well. I had 81% passing nice. accuracy, 95% dribbling accuracy. Four possessions won and then three possessions lost. And as per the game, the man of the match was X, who scored a hat-trick, so well done, X. Um, but no, regardless, you know, the game was very strong on our side. You know, as you could see from the, the performance, we did miss a penalty. We could have scored so much more. I think overall, you know, we were better positioned as a team versus the opposition. Um, and the way that the game flowed, so as mentioned, you know, they did score the first goal from outside of the box. You'll see it. It was a beautiful goal, don't get me wrong, but it's just the goalkeeper needs to do much better. Um, that's why I hate um, having AIs as goalkeepers or even outfield players. Um, but the first goal was for myself uh, that lobbed it over, passed it to X, and X converted the goal. Second goal was straight from kickoff, literally. When we scored the first goal straight from kickoff, we uh, pressured the team, got the ball, and then X went on to score, so well done. And then the third goal was me to Emigord. It was saved, but then rebounded to Sergio, and then Sergio for the goal. Fourth goal, again, myself, who lobbed it over to X again, and then X scored the hat-trick, so well done, X. Fifth goal was Thiago's corner to Sergio, and then being converted from Sergio from the corner. And then the sixth goal was Emigol to myself, and then it's a goal. And then vice versa, for the seventh goal, I gave it back to Emigold, and then he scored. He was very unlucky, Emigold, in this match, man. He was very unlucky. hit the post. He also... Just had the opportunities not being to his standard, so I had to pass it to him. I had to give him the goal, but either way, well done to the team. And um, the lineup that we had from the team, so left back we had Adams, we had Sergio as centre back, and then central midfielder we had Thiago Antique, myself as central attacking midfielder, and then Emigord and X3 as striker. It was unfortunate as we did have Begovic as the CDM, but pff, FIFA in it, it just kicks you out and. You know, especially since this new update, like, my game has been so bugged and so bad. Like, it's been lagging. The bugs, like, I can't get the ball sometimes. It's, it's, it's as if, like, the players um, have, like, a, a force field around them. And I'm just going around and I can't get the ball sometimes. I just find it very ridiculous. Like, the game, since this update, has been broken, man. I just don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the case because FIFA 23 is coming that they're trying to make everyone frustrated in order to purchase FIFA 23. But that's what they do with other games, you know. They, they how do you say it, like bring up these glitches, all these bugs, all some issues in which it forces the individual to move over to the new game and, um, you know, get away from the old game. And that's something that, you know, is a strategy that I know that is implemented in, in so a lot of games. So like, maybe it's that, but I don't know. But regardless, they just love to break the game, these FIFA guys. But I don't know. We'll talk about EA on another day again and how useless they are with everything that they do. But regardless, you know, moving across to what we're going to be discussing today while you guys enjoy this game, you know, very fast flowing football. Please do let me know your opinion as well as your feedback on how you think this game went, areas that we could improve and vice versa. And I think, you know, we do look at improving as a team and this is something that we do enjoy. But yeah, what we're going to be talking about today, guys, is just um, transfers. You know, we're coming to the end or towards the end of the transfer deadline. It's going to be on the 1st of September. So much is happening and, I, and it's things that I wanted to share with you um, in terms of like uh, transfers that have been made and just my thoughts on them. Plus, of course, you know, Liverpool versus Bournemouth was one of the, the games that were being predicted. Um, or, you know, being a Liverpool fan was the game that I predicted as 3-0, but... I don't think anyone expected the result to be 9-0. I think it was one of those ones where, yes, they didn't they didn't have a great performance or a great start to the season. 
drew twice, lost to United, and then bam. I knew that they were going to win, don't get me wrong. It was always going to be a case that Liverpool would win. Oh, uh, you know, firstly, they're at home. Secondly, it's against Bournemouth, where they do convert quite a lot of goals. But thirdly, I didn't expect this many goals. You know, the team flow was great, but again, it's not... We shouldn't be over big in Liverpool because regardless, yes, they didn't play well against Man Manchester United and the other teams. But when you look at the performance that they played at Anfield against Bournemouth, you'll just see how much that they were pressing. Like they put uh, Bournemouth in so much pressure that, of course, there were so many mistakes that were happening. Possession based football, the, uh, the accuracy within the passing, the shots as well. Like Bournemouth did not have an opportunity to do anything like oh. Liverpool fully controlled it. And it's one of those ones, yes, Liverpool have had so many injuries uh, within the team. And I was saying it on my last video where they could actually make a full 11 apart from the left back position of all the injuries that they have. And it's one of those ones, again, where they need to either look at making a move for someone in the market if there's someone suitable. Uh, Frankie de Jong, you know, that'll be banter if we do get Frankie de Jong, um, you know, with the whole transfer saga that's been happening with him and United, you know, I think it's been going on for a whole month and it's just pure banter, man, like he just doesn't want to go to United, he's like, look, I don't want to go to your crappy club, man, even Chelsea made a bid and he was so likely to move over to Chelsea, but I've heard on the news that he's actually flying across to somewhere in the UK. It's either going to be United, Chelsea or Liverpool that he's going to be going towards. I don't think he would move to Liverpool, especially around his um, wage. It's being too high, but I think Chelsea might be a good option. I don't know. I don't want him to go United because, again, they just ruin players down there. But, hoo -hoo. but yeah, let's see how that goes. But, no, regardless, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see if Liverpool do make any purchases as mentioned in the the market for the midfielder position because yes they do have injuries but again the age of the midfielders is 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 too old like we do need the youth to start up Elliot played fantastic for Liverpool he reminds me like of Foden his ball control his play style and he's in that similar position as Foden you know these British youth are just fantastic and the English youth let's just say so no really good to see him score and you know he was emotional because I think his grandma passed away which was unfortunate and he is a lifelong Liverpool fan so that's something you know which was personal to him so you know great to see him score and then of course my main boy Carvalho who I've been saying I've been bigging this guy up for a while now and you know it's great to see that he had 45 minutes under his belt against Bournemouth when he did come on in the second half. I'm glad that he came on. And I'm glad that other, you know, youthful players within the system came on. I think his, I always say his name wrong, Badges Tech. He's a centre-back but also a midfielder. Great Spanish prospect for the future. And he's always been highlighted as one of the key wonder kids within the, the Liverpool Academy. Um, so this is going to be a great little chance for us to see more of the action within the first team. And maybe the whole long-term strategy for Liverpool is is to youth is to utilize the youth um, that they have. But when you do look at the bench, you know it's it's not great in terms of the strength that we have as well as the depth that we have because of the, all oh, the injuries that we do currently have sustained within the side. So now let, let's see if they do make a transfer within the deadline side of things. But I don't think it's going to happen. I do really feel that Fabinho, Elliot, as well as Carvalho should be starting as the midfielder position. Oh, going for Trent. My man scored from a midfield position. Like, that was actually a banging goal. He needs to be, as a RCM, a right central midfielder. He will be so good at that position, man. But, I don't know, man. Trent, he, he needs to do something. Because Kimmich, wonderful. Like, the way he transitioned from a fullback on the right side into the central position that he is now in midfield. And again, he's got the flexibility, if there's any injuries or whatnot, to move over and the versatility to move over over to these positions. But I think Klopp does really need to give it a go, man. I think he's, he's uh, missing the opportunity to maybe unlock Trent in a further, bigger capacity than what he is at the moment with more goals and more assists. But I don't know, let's see what happens with that. But talking about transfers, guys, and I think one of the transfers that... <laughs> something that really not frustrates me but something that really annoys me is you know goalkeeper wise um was it Jan Sommer from Brosio Mokken uh, Gladbach is one of the most underrated goalkeepers for many years now um it's one of those ones where he both club as well as international has done such a fantastic job and just recently there was a game against Bayern and they were away Bayern Munich were at home and it, it came out as a draw. But regardless, like, Jan Sommer made 19 saves, which is a Bundesliga record. 
But overall, like he's been slept on for the past years, and I feel so bad for him. It's like, it's like you, as an example, if you're working your ass off at work, yeah, like literally you're working your ass off, you're doing so much in terms of performance, and you've been, you know, at the high level for so much, uh, for so many years, and then it comes along <laughs> where there's just the middle, you know, average person that's being promoted over you, but just based on regardless on, I don't know, I don't know, but it's, it's, it's something that is completely unfair. Like I do see this guy Sommer moving across to like a top four club in the Premier League, Italian League, or even the Spanish League and doing very well. He's such a good shot stopper, like watch his highlights. And I've been bigging him up for years, but it's unfortunate now man is 33 years old. He's, I don't know if he's in his peak at the moment or if he's gonna go on a dip. But he, he's been slept on so bad, man. And I feel so bad for him because he's such a good goalkeeper. Such an insane goalkeeper, man. But do let me know your thoughts on Jan Sommer. But for me, he should have been purchased ages ago by a big club. And they would have worked wonders, especially if he had a very strong defence in front of him. But yeah, that's my rant. And I feel bad for Jan Sommer, man. I've been bigging him up for so many years. And it's just disappointing to see that he's he's been at uh, Mocken Gladbach or whatever the club name is. For so many years, but good good signing. But I think he's a bit too old now, which is a bit disappointed to see um, on that side of things. But you know, we've also got Anthony, 85 million. It's like a money heist uh, program series that's been happening with Ajax. They've literally had Manchester United's pants pulled down throughout the entire market. Like yes, Martinez is now doing quite well with Varane, the centre back partnership. But again, I don't know if it's going to be sustained for a long term or long run. Especially if uh, you know clubs are going to be exploiting that side, you know we did see it with Brighton, we did see it with uh, Brentford as well. Liverpool, I don't know what the hell they were doing, but they weren't as ruthful as they should be. But again, Varane and Martinez might be the choice that they should be going for. Maguire, a very big liability. That's been a liability at United for so many years. I just don't understand why he's still captain. First of all, he should be on the bench or sold out. He's not a great, uh, what is it, captain or as well as a first team player. De Gea hates having him. <laughs> he, he doesn't even pass to him. He, he sees him free, but he's like, nah, your first touch is awful, Maguire. Plus, you're going to do some stupid stuff that you're going to, like, literally get the goals, you know, conceded for Manchester United. So, I'm happy that they're going for Ron and Martinez, and he's sitting on the bench. But now they've bought Anthony. And that's going to be actually very surprising now to see how they operate this because, of course, you've got the likes of Martial, Sancho, uh, bloody, I don't even know half of the players, Sancho, Martial and Rashford. I was thinking, who's these uh, front fleet? But now it's going to be a case where I feel that they're going to operate with Rashford, Sancho and Anthony. Anthony being a, a great right-winged laissez player, Martial being so-so, even Rashford over the past couple of seasons, but Rashford scoring a great goal against Liverpool. Um, I think it's just going to be now a chance if they do have a great, let's say, team up front that they might do. They, they might be more exploitive in, in terms of their attacking options. But again, with the stats side of things, Anthony isn't great if we look at the stats, OK? Yes, he's a very skillful player, dribbler or whatever the case is. But in the most easiest league, Ajax, you know, in the Dutch league, you've got 23 games, 8 goals and 4 assists. Even the previous season, he had around like 9 goals or whatever the case is. Um, but again, not not being as consistent or as potent as he should be. Maybe that will change when he's at United, but who knows? I think he's going to be a very, you know, dribbling as well as a highly skillful player. You know, we did see it with Rakalson. Glad that he did get dropped on his ass, especially with the skills. Like, why show banter? You're so crap anyway, Rakalson. Like, you don't offer anything to any team. Like, why is man, like, doing skill against Nottingham Forest? I'm glad that he got tackled. Like, literally, I don't know what he was thinking, but... Yeah, it wasn't even disrespectful. It's just like annoying. Like, why would you just come up or kicky ups or whatever the case is? Like, he's a rubbish player, Ricardo. And I really don't understand how Tottenham bought him as well. But we'll get to another story with Tottenham. But we're talking about the the team that's had their pants pulled down from Ajax this entire season. You know, it's going to be interesting now to see how Anthony suits or you know molds into the team. You've still got Van der Beek with the side as well, but who doesn't play as much? Fantastic player Van der Beek is. I don't understand why he doesn't play for United. Bring McTominay on the bench and even Eriksen so so man. Van, Van der Beek is the guy that should be playing for United. Um, and another player that's being slept on is Hudson Odoi for Chelsea. Like. I don't understand these guys. Like, truthfully, I don't understand Chelsea, okay? Because 
Hudson Odoi has been a wonder kid, okay? On Football Manager, as well as FIFA, or whatever the cases are, prospect wise, for a very, very long time. And I don't know why they don't even sell him. Like, there's around 20 to 25 top clubs, okay? I've always been interested in him, but they never want to sell him. I, and and the thing is, they don't even want to play him. Like now, yes, of course, they're, they're being rumoured for Anthony Gordon. Like, don't get me wrong, he scored a great goal just recently in the past game. Uh, who was it? Against Brentford. But again, 60 mil. 21-year-old, you've got hudson Adoy that's been in the youth for so many years. But now he's being loaned off to, what is it, Bayer Leverkusen. Um... It's just for a season loan, but I don't know if there's a purchase value based on that. But I think that's a fantastic move for him because we do see a lot of like the English players when they do move, move over to the German league. You're looking at Lookman, you're looking at Bellingham, you're looking at other individual key players that have done fantastic in the German league being a British based player. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Hudson Odoi. But I'm, I'm quite disappointed in Chelsea, man, not doing much in terms of retaining or even playing this guy. Like, I don't know what they're doing with in terms of the transfer policy. I don't see Gordon doing well, even the 60 mil transfer that they're going for. I don't see him adapting well to the Chelsea, you know, wherever he's going to be placed as a centre forward or a winger. But their number nines haven't been great, as I've mentioned in my past videos. But yeah, rant over, guys. I do, uh, I do appreciate you guys listening to me as always. But do let me know your opinions on the transfer market. What you think about Anthony? Sommer, Hudson Odoi, all of these Liverpool players and everything in the transfer market. It will be great to understand your thoughts. But please do like and subscribe as always. Thank you so much for your support. And I'll catch you guys on tomorrow's video. Take care and bye bye.